here's the deal. I made a cooking video. It was for my dad's guacamole. My dad's guac is legendary. When I was growing up, we'd have it on the weekends and both my mom, my brother, and I would get a bowl. Like, we did not mess around. We got a bowl of guac. A moly. It was a pure treat. When it would happen, it was like an exciting thing in my house. So we all kind of put our own twist on it. And this was going to be my recipe review of my dad's guac. I filmed all three parts of it. And then I got real cocky and I got on my camera and I was downloading stuff from my memory card. And I was like, no, I don't need that erase. Yeah, that was. That was like the first part that I totally erased. But I did this whole thing. Now it's gone forever. It's like, <sighs> instead of scrapping this entire thing, I want to, I can't even think of the word. That's how upset I am about this. I want to at least try and put something together. So I'm going to do this quick intro for you. In two seconds, you'll see me in my kitchen chopping and talking. But for now, just know there are about five to six ripe avocados. And I actually made a video about how to know whether or not an avocado is ripe or not. My hair is being really weird. And then there's this thing about how you cut an avocado. I'm going to use my hands because I don't have the footage. Ugh. I score the avocados, so I cut them lengthwise and then I cut them horizontally and then I just use a spoon or you can just squeeze them out. And it's important to have those thicker chunks because we do not do the guacamole that is whipped. Does not, like our family, we do not do that. If you like that, then cool, you can just stir it up later. But for now, keeping those chunks as chunks is a good thing. The other thing is with the cilantro. Now. There are tools for all of this. You can get a tool to like chop cilantro, peel cilantro. There's, I like to do cilantro in a really basic fashion. I rinse it and then I just take a stalk and I just use my fingers and pull the leaves off. A lot of people say you can put the stems in there. I'm not a big fan of the stems. They're a little bit more bitter. So I like to do this method. It takes a while. So, you know, if you have a party, give this to somebody in the room who has a large glass of wine or a cocktail and they'll be fine. Just give them that. Delegate, 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 delegate. You can also take the entire bundle of cilantro and just slide a really sharp chef's knife on top of the leaves and they'll just come right off. You'll get some stems there, but if I get really tired or if I'm lacking in time, that's the other thing that I'll do. It's really easy. Sorry that wasn't filmed in my kitchen. I'm probably more upset about it than you'll ever be, but you know. Well, hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Six avocados, one bunch of cilantro. So now let's go straight into having all the cilantro ready to go, and now I'm gonna get started on chopping. I'll leave you with that. There it is, all plucked from the stems. The word plucked is very odd. I don't like it torn from the stems and you have a bowl full of cilantro. So we have the avocado, now we have the cilantro, we're gonna chop the crap out of it. And not break the bowl. So chop the cilantro finely. Mm -hmm. This is a really good thing to do if you wanna take out your aggression. I'm just telling you because I feel like sharing. There's a little grater that you can get for cilantro that actually my dad uses a lot. I find it to be very cumbersome and annoying, so I just chop. Plus, I really, really like chopping. This is done, easy peasy. So that's gonna go into the bowl, like so. Ooh, yeah, it's coming together. It looks really good. So here's the other thing I wanna point out, and my dad taught me this. You don't want to overwork the avocado. I don't like a super whipped kind of guacamole, so you don't even need to stir it at this point, but as you go through, you can take a wooden spoon is probably better and just sort of fold it in. Oh well, that's like a lot of cilantro. It's gonna be good. Come together. Layers, layers of flavor, layers. Onion. What I do is I chop off both the ends. This is how I finally dice an onion. Now, I did not go to culinary school, which you can probably tell at this point. So if you did, then you're probably like, she's crazy, What? oh my God, she doesn't even know what she's doing. And you talk like that too. Then I peel off the outer layer of an onion. You want a small to medium sized onion. I don't like having too much onion. I wanna be able to taste the other flavors in the wok. So I use a, this is probably like a medium size but I usually go for a small. And then I just slice down, you know, when you slice, you're supposed to do this whole thing. 
and like I'm probably holding my knife wrong. I really do want to go to culinary school to be honest with you, but the San Francisco cooking school is a tuition of $30,000, so I'm like, whoa! I'll just do some cookbooks at home. All right, so I chop it, uh oh, screwed it up. Chop it like this. And then I do the same thing kind of as I did to the avocado. So you make a cross section, chopping it the other way. And you don't go all the way to the bottom when you're doing this. So you gotta be careful. And the last time I'm chopping it on the cross section, that's when I go to the bottom. Because that gives me a flat surface to chop on. So it ends up looking like, like this. Just go right down the onion. And you can see it's dicing. You're you're dicing, y'all. It's really efficient. And when you get to the end and you're like, oh my god, I can't do it again, don't do it again. It's not worth losing your finger. Also quite therapeutic. I'm telling you, chopping is like the new needlepoint. If needlepoint was was trendy, which it's totally not. The new adult coloring book. Okay, but you can't do this on a plane because that would just be really offensive. And slightly impossible. I'm gonna do it a little bit finer because I don't want a huge chunk in my mouth. Nobody wants a huge chunk of onion in their mouth. Let's be honest, okay? A really sharp knife is a good thing to have here or else you do that thing where you're chopping, you put your knife down and it's, if it's too dull, pieces go flying everywhere. Deep thoughts while you're chopping onions, am I right? I'm Brittany. I chop. What do you do? Oh, that's great. I chop, I chop, I chop, I chop, I chop, I chop, I chop. They're little, they're like little baby squares. Little baby squares. Eyeball. That's about a quarter of a cup. Do that again. Good to go. And now we have our onions in the bowl. I don't know why I have to show you this. It's like you know what chopped up onions look like. For the rest of the onions, what I'm gonna do is, speaking of my dad, my dad's guacamole. Oh, I have some left over, huh? No, I do not like those. There's this crazy cool device and it's in the shape of an onion, so... <laughs> So now you know where you put your onions. You put your onions in the onion. Sometimes when you put chopped onions in your refrigerator, everything smells like chopped onions. This little doodad is freaking brilliant. He's so good at finding this stuff. I twist open and I store all my onions in here, pop it in the fridge. And it stays for quite a while, it stays for quite a while. So I'm gonna put the rest of the onions in here, leave it open and see if I need more once I start testing and tasting, which is like the most fun part. First, I gotta wash my hands with scrub. You need a little tomato. This gives you that. You can put in about a quarter of a cup and it'll do the trick. After I pour this in, I always taste it. It's gonna start to get like all about trying and adding and adding a little bit more to see what you like. I also have a salsa roja. A salsa roja. Roll your R's when you say it, you know? I have a pico that is fresh from Whole Foods and I love pico, anything pico. Pico, pico, pico. Pico de gallo, pico de gallo salsa. I love it on eggs, I love it on tomatoes. Wait, no, that doesn't make sense. I love it on salads. I love everything, I love pico. Can you tell I like pico? Cause I like pico, pico. This will be a different flavor. So I'm gonna try the paste, test it out, and then I'm gonna try a little bit of the pico. After that, I'm gonna do some serrano peppers. This is not in my dad's recipe, this is a Britney edition. My brother adds serrano, jalapeno, and habanero. I'm not a huge jalapeno person, but I think it's delicious in here. However, I did not buy a jalapeno, so I'm just doing serrano. Now I'm just gonna do the salsa. I'm just gonna pour a little bit in there, very little. Sort of fold it all together. It's my folding song. <laughs> oh, good, you guys. Also a crowd pleaser. So see, right now, it's still really chunky, and you want that, because you're gonna keep stirring it down. I'm gonna taste. I'm gonna eat that. Definitely needs. Let's try the pico. I'm stirring that in. Mm. It's so good. A bit more of the paste. It's kind of tangy, and it needs it. So now let's taste. Wish you guys could taste. Like, do you want a little? I can't. Mm-hmm. Mm it's good. It's really good. Maybe a little bit more onion. Now it's probably at the amount of a full small onion. Next, we're gonna do the serrano pepper. Serrano pepper. If you're touching this, do not touch your eyes. That's all you need to remember. Now I'm going to finally, 
finely, finely, finely diced. The last thing you need is somebody getting a full chunk of Serrano. Everybody has different spice thresholds. Um, oh, see? You can't touch your eyes. It was so close, I almost did it. <sighs> I have about a tablespoon on the cutting board. I'm gonna finely dice it. So again, chopping. Ooh, not the weirdest when people just put uh at the end of all their sentences. You're like, really? Did you really need an uh at the end of that? I'll demonstrate. Chopping is so fun. Uh, totally wanna go out on Friday. Uh, why, like why the uh? Where did that happen? When did that happen? Deep thoughts while chopping. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm adding my serrano peppers. You don't have to say it like that, but I love saying it like that. Serrano peppers added. They're in the bowl, people. It's all happening. I just got a serrano. Hey-o. Now I'm squeezing some lime in there to brighten it up. You're so at the end of this. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. This one's a little spicy. Yeah, it is. Oh. Putting a little salt. Whole oh, mama. Definitely put the juice of an entire lime, if not more. One is enough for me. If you like citrus, add more. Do what you gotta do. I just make my own tortilla chips, corn tortillas. I cut them, I quarter it, I put them on a baking sheet, 350 for 15 minutes. I spray them with olive oil spray, sea salt. And then you can sprinkle a little lime on top of them too. Pull them out and eat the guac and you're done. So that right there is my dad's guacamole recipe slash my guacamole recipe. I love it. Oh, it's so good. It's creamy, it's fresh. It's got a real bite to it with the serrano, but the heat hits you after. It's not right up front, so it's really good. The whole bowl, and then what I do is Put the pit back with the guac. It also helps the guacamole from turning dark brown. And then what my dad does is he'll take saran wrap and he will place it right on top all the way down, not at the top of the bowl, but on top of the guacamole so it helps it, so it prevents it from the oxygen hitting it. So it's a great way to keep your guacamole for a while. So there you go, that's it. That's the whole guac recipe. If you bring this out on game day, or brunch, whatever, you're a star, you're a superstar. And if you make your own tortilla chips, which PS is like the easiest thing to do, double superstar. You're winning at life and adulting. So congratulations to you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up, support the channel. I will see you guys next time. Go out there, have some fun, and uh, go eat some avocados. Cause they are so, so good. They're good. That's it. I can really just eat it like this. Is that weird? I don't think so. Mm. I mean, see you guys later. Bye. Remind me to never watch the news because it's on in the background and it's awful. Ugh. Mm. Mm. Oh, do most people talk about bodily functions when they're making guacamole? No, there's probably a reason for that. I feel better already. This was therapeutic.